Okay, listen up. Children's nutrition does not have to be frustrating. You can learn to avoid power struggles and help that picky eater in your family eat that balanced diet. And it starts with playing with their food. Say what? Joining us with all of the answers is registered dietitian from Blueprint Nutrition, Roseanne Robinson. Good morning, morning. Mrs. Robinson. Oh, good morning. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Okay, where do we begin, Mel? You have a oh, picky eater. You know what? I, I'm, it, parents are going to throw things at the screen. I actually have the opposite. I have a really good eater. Oh, I have he? a really, really good eater, but it's because of some of the things that you're going to talk about today. So I love all of this, Roseanne, because I know so wow. many parents yeah. that have to make, you know, two different meals, one for the family and one for that three, four, five-year-old who's not going to eat the zucchini and the broccoli and all of that. Short order chef. But you say this is about practice. Yeah. This is about practice, and we know that it's a very common problem. So research supports that about 5 to 60% of children will go through this picky eating phase. That's a really big range, but that's because the definition of picky eating in research really varies. They haven't agreed upon what one definition is. Um, but really, the take-home point there is that it affects a lot of children, and it tends to peak around the age of three. Doctors often say, you know, picky eating will, will solve itself. It'll go away on its own. But from my experience in my practice, I know that that's not necessarily true and that sometimes parents need a little bit of guidance, a little bit of extra support in terms of how to, you know, engage with their children around food, decrease the pressure, really look at the root causes of the picky eating and get a positive mealtime environment going at the table. Okay, so mm -hmm. you say positive repetition is key. You must put that into practice. So beginning with yes. food play activity with sensory bins. Nice. Yes, so the whole idea around playing with your food is getting kids that positive experience and exposure. Kids love to play, right? That's their language. That's why we have play-based learning in kindergarten. So getting their hands in and dirty. So I have a bin of oats this morning. It was funny you were talking about oats before <laughs> on the segment. Nice. Um, I, we love tractors in our house, so there's tractors in those oats. You can have dry oats or cooked oats. But the whole point here is getting kids used to the feeling and the touch. That helps to decrease anxiety or the fear of new food, what we call neophobia. Um, it really helps to decrease that fear and anxiety, especially when it's away from the table, at play, in an area that's really fun for kids. So you know what, Roseanne, this brings me to the book about green eggs and ham. Mm -hmm. Sam, I, I, yes. with, with, with Dr. Seuss, I always say, well, he, did, he didn't know. He had to try it. He just kept saying sure. no until, you, you know, you, you slowly weave it into. But the way to weave it into the, the child's daily basis, too, is to play, like you said, but also play and be creative, right? Be creative. So the, the second play-based activity we're going to talk about is kind of crafting it with food. So one way you can do that is painting. Um, so that was a vegetable stamp painting that I did with my kids recently. But what I really love doing is actually crafting with food. So there's Mr. Potato oh, Head, so um, if you guys can see him. And so you have to do with parent because there's some toothpicks there. But we're just going to give him some power boots here um, at the bottom. And then we're going to give him some arms. And this is all great because they're touching the food, right? It doesn't have to be that they're eating it. This is all about exposure. This is not necessarily that they're eating, but they're touching, they're interacting with it. Um, you know, they're getting used to kale and those cherry tomatoes. And you know what, they might actually even want to take a bite and that's great. It's not the goal. This is about exposure, but it's just great that they're interacting with it. And you know what the best part is? You can cook Mr. Potato afterwards. They love that. He's adorable. He's got yeah. that COVID cruciferous hair growth going. It's <laughs> Fantastic. And then you say science yeah. makes science and food synonymous. So again, it's about exposure and making it fun. Exactly. And this is for the older kids. So if you have a child that's kind of in the older elementary years, um, you can talk about stuff like why does oil and vinegar not mix together? So when we pour this, what's going to happen? Um, and you can definitely talk to your kids about well, why, is that? why did the oil just go to the top, right? So one's hydrophobic, one's hydrophilic. That might be a bit advanced for some of those kids, but it's really fun to talk about the science. And I love about that is getting kids in the kitchen. That's another really great way to expose kids to new foods and in a really fun way. Who doesn't like to make you know, chocolate cake or bake some cookies or muffins, throw some zucchini in there. Um, but talk about the science behind it. Why do we add baking soda or baking powder, right? There's so many good things we can talk about there. So smart. I would say, especially during this pandemic, a lot of the parents mm -hmm. are doing more hands-on things with the kids. Why not get them in the kitchen? I know my, hus uh, my husband, whoops, my son, my son helps <laughs> me more than my husband. He likes the process, right? If he's helping to get the potatoes out, he knows that mommy's going to chop it and then we watch it in the oven and he can eat it at, at the end. So it's kind of a whole thing from A 
to Z, and that kind of puts it together for them, right? Part of the process. Yeah. Yeah. It does, right? And I think summer's a great time. We have some patio pots out back, and we have the pleasure of having a large garden. Um, so the kids really enjoy picking the cherry tomatoes and getting, you know, harvesting the basil to put on our pizza. Um, so there's so many great ways, even if you don't have a garden, just to get a little patio pot. When kids really experience food in that way, whether it's through play or other hands-on ways, I mean, even watching a YouTube video on how carrots grow, there's lots of ways that we can really engage kids around food, and that really helps with their um, decreasing anxiety at the table and being willing to, you know, take that next step eventually. Great tips. Nice. Where do we find more online, Roseanne? You can head to our website at blueprintnutrition.ca, or you can find me on Instagram at blueprint.nutrition.kids. Awesome. Thank you so much. We'll be back with more BT Canada right after this. Happy eating.